Scleromiclus has been classified as a non pterosaur basal of Metatarsalia member, it between the dinosaurs and pterosaurs. If Scleromiclus is indeed related to pterosaurs, this may offer insight as to how the latter evolved, since early pterosaurs also show adaptations for saltatorial locomotion. Pre and Dactylia were basal pterosaurs from the Triassic period. Pre and Dactylus had single cusped teeth, meaning they had one point on each tooth, and it has been found that it was one of the most basal pterosaur. The Ostriodactylus had an elongated skull, it carried a bony crest that widened as it descended towards the snout. Despite its great age, Eudemorphodon has few primitive characteristics making the taxon of little use in attempting to ascertain where pterosaurs fit in the reptile family tree. The paucity of early pterosaur remains has ensured that their evolutionary origin continues to be a mystery. Like most non-pterodactyloid pterosaurs, Dimorphodon was a competent climber, possessing proportionally large and curved angles and a low center of gravity. Like modern squirrels, it probably moved in a saltatorial manner as it climbed. The Solnhofein fossil beds of Germany did such a good job at preserving Ram 4 inches that paleontologists know just about everything there is to know about these flying reptiles. They know its bone structure and the layout of its internal organs. Comparisons between the scleral rings of Ram 4 inches and modern birds suggest that it may have been diurnal. This may also indicate niche partitioning with contemporary pterosaurs inferred to be nocturnal, such as Scophognathus. The sword's fossil shows remains of the soft parts, such as membranes and hair-like filaments. This was the first unequivocal proof that pterosaurs had a layer of hair-like filaments covering their bodies, later named fibers. Aneurygnathids are often believed to have been nocturnal or crepuscular akin to bats. The fact that many aneurygnathids have large eye sockets supports the theory of living in darkness. Aneurygnathid teeth suggest they were insectivorous, though some may have had more prey choices, such as Batrachognathus and Jehaloptrus, who is also believed to have been a fish eater. The wings of Jehaloptrus show evidence that they attach to the ankle. The legs are short but robust. The toes bear well-developed curved claws, but these are not as long as the hand claws. Pterodactylus is one of the most recognizable flying creatures to have ever lived on the Earth. This flying reptile was about the same size as a common buzzard, it flew over the ocean like modern day seagulls and pulled fish from the waves. Tenacasmu is distinguished mainly by its numerous, over 400, long, thin, curved and closely packed teeth, which lined its elongated. The teeth were so closely packed that they formed a cone. These are thought to indicate a filter feeding lifestyle, straining water through the teeth in order to capture and eat small invertebrates, but unlike the related pterodastro it lacks adaptations that would form a pumping mechanism. Paleontologists suggest that, like flamingos, these two pterosaurs diet may have resulted in a pink hue. The huge skull crest on Noctosaurus brought up a variety of different questions. Paleontologists aren't entirely sure but some have speculated it could have been the mast for an enormous sail. But it may be unstable and useless for flight. 
G. Ostenberger was older than Tyrannodon and is considered to be the direct ancestor of that species. Paleontologists aren't exactly sure whether Tyrannodon flew under its own power or if it glided. Most paleontologists seem to think that it glided and if that is the case, then it would have probably launched itself off of a cliff or similarly high object. The enormous crest on its head was used to stabilize it during flight. The large number of Hampterus individual found allowed to establish a growth series, showing how individuals developed through their ontogeny. It was assumed that a clear sexual dimorphism was discovered. Anhangara held its head at an angle to the ground due to its inner rear structure, which helped the animal detect its balance. It had bony discs in their eye sockets, called sclerotic rings. These discs may have provided support to the pterosaur's eyes. Ornithochi irids like Trapignathus were among the last pterosaurs to possess teeth. Tapegerids appear to have been arboreal, having more curved claws than other arist archoid pterosaurs and occurring more commonly in fossil sites with other arboreal flying vertebrates such as early birds. Tapegerids have long been speculated as having been frugivores or omnivores, based on their parrot-like beaks. Nemecoloptrus is one of just a few known pterosaurs that lived in the continental interior, and probably hunted insects and roosted in the forest canopy. Most tapegerids possessed a bony crest arising from the snout. In some species like tapejara, this bony crest is known to have supported an even larger crest of softer, fibrous tissue that extends back along the skull. Studies of tapegerid brain cases show that they had extremely good vision, more so than in other pterosaur groups, and probably relied nearly exclusively on vision when hunting or interacting with other members of their species. Evolution of tapegerid's beak shows the evolution of fruits during the Cretaceous period, it had ragged edges forming pseudo-teeth to better separate the fruit flesh from the seeds, as with some extant toucans. Chupixera is a Thalassodromidae member, which means sea runners, due to previous misconceptions of skimming behavior. They are now thought to be terrestrial predators. Pterosaurs that belong to the Dzungaripteridae group are thought to have primarily if not exclusively fed upon shellfish, and adaptations for this diet can be clearly seen in Dzungaripterus itself. Koyangopterus is known to have been a toothless pterosaur and was assumed to have been a fish eater, but other relevant details of its paleobiology will have to await a more detailed description. It had been suggested as darkards were skins, but further research has cast doubt on this idea, demonstrating that as darkards lack the necessary adaptations for a skim feeding lifestyle, and that they may have led a more terrestrial existence similar to modern storks. Hatsigopteryx pictures depict this flying reptile as a somewhat unusual animal. It was a huge pterosaur with a long neck and an unusual crest on its head. This giant pterosaur lived on an island known for its dwarf dinosaurs. If there is one thing that you should notice from Quetzalcoatlus pictures, 
It's the fact that this was one huge flying reptile. Paleontologists have analyzed the fossils and many of them believe that it had no choice but to launch itself off of the side of cliffs and glide. These animals were among the last known surviving members of the pterosaurs, and were a rather successful group with a worldwide distribution.